Hi there, my name's Jeff Bull. I'm Yashar. You know, it's so amazing to be back in Cisco Live in person. Um, it feels great to meet great. people like you that I've never met in person before and getting to connect about all this cool stuff here in the DevNet zone. But Yashar, I wanted to start off and kind of ask you, how did you get first started in what we do with DevNet? Things like automation and programmability and like using technology to program it and make things, make problems simpler. The interest of the DevNet really came in from the CSAP program when I first joined Cisco. We got introduced to DevNet and programmability, network automation, really from how do customers view it and what are some workflows that we could help automate that either Cisco solutions out of the box can do or using DevNet, how can we leverage APIs or products like Cisco Modding Labs, NSO, to really create a full on CI CD and infrastructure as code deployment. So that interest stemmed from the CSAP program where I was learning about what customers face. And as I've been supporting federal customers the last two years, seeing it firsthand, being able to meet them and see their eyes light up when we talk about automation has been has been awesome. So that's where the interest stems from. That's so cool. And, and you know, one of the things I think everyone thinks about when you talk, anybody talks about the idea of automation or, or using programmable technology to automate something. At the end of the day, what you're doing is solving a problem for yourself. You're, you're taking a problem that could be a small problem, a big problem, and you're making it simpler. Or making it simpler so that it can just be repeated and kind of put it aside so you can put your brain power on something else. So I am actually really curious. Of, of all the things that you kind of went with and you've talked about some customer use cases, mm -hmm. in that process for yourself, was there like, you, you mentioned a WebEx chatbot or something to that, other things like that. Was right. there ever one thing that was like, you did this and you like, you wrote some code down or something and you solved one problem for yourself that you're like, oh, oh, that's really cool. What else can I kind of do next? Was there one thing that maybe kind of triggered all that? Uh, that's a great question, man. I, for me, I think there were several things. It's hard to pin down to one. I, I guess two I can trim it down to. Uh, one was talking to a federal, uh, one of my customers where they have several of our solutions from Cisco and they wanted greater visibility in one dashboard. And as he was, the, the call didn't start off that way. You know, I was, we were catching up as a, you know, just one-on-one. -on -one. And as he was talking about what the issue was, I was like, you know what? His gentleman's name is Mike. Mike, you know, we could actually create a, you know, a single pane of glass, if we want to call it that, or a dashboard where we use the APIs from DNA Center, EPNM, other controllers from Cisco, and create for you that one, uh, you know, visibility tool. So that was when he heard that and noticed, oh, that's the power of the API. That's where it sparked, I think, for the customer to see, okay, this is how DevNet can help us. And then for me, you know, from an interest perspective, that helped grow into, okay, what other use cases can we do? We created that dashboard with the help of the GVE DevNet team. And from there, yeah, looking at the different chatbots, like you said, even internally we use it to help onboard new uh, federal SCs onto the team. Mike Yonkers and the CIDR team have created this awesome tool called CollabBot where once you add someone to a, a, a a WebEx chat space, it'll provision you all the accounts you need. It's like AWS accounts, CML. Mm -hmm. So showing that to customers too, is, is it makes them realize, oh wow, all these manual processes we're doing today, what if we use a chatbot out of anything using a collaboration tool to create it? So those are the two use cases I have that really got me going from yeah. a DevNet perspective. That's really cool. Uh, there's somebody that I work with now that coined a phrase, I, I wouldn't say coined a phrase, but somebody who I, uh, he, he's made this statement years ago to me that always like really triggered what doing all of this work, learning these technologies can actually mean for you. Um, and the phrase he used was art of the possible. And the way that I always took it was kind of the art of what's possible. When you see a simple use case, it could be something like a chatbot. Great, that example you gave is fantastic where, hey, you, you have a company and you have a simple chatbot where somebody goes into a space and great, all your accounts have been provisioned, you can reply here with a single question and someone can get back and help you, but all your things are in one place. It, what it, what it shows you is not just that you solved that one problem, made some individual process for an end user or something like that a lot simpler. Right. What it really shows you is like, imagine what else is possible. I just made, you just made this yep. one little thing. Imagine what else you can do if you spent five more minutes on it, 20 more minutes on it, or went to a whiteboard like we have over here and did some design thinking work and just talked for a couple of minutes about, you know, what else could I make this do? And what other problems could I solve? And it becomes, it starts to be, it starts to make you realize you can kind of do whatever you want. 100%. It, yeah, time and money is always a thing, but the great part about software and APIs and using these technologies is that you have the flexibility to literally make anything that you want to have happen 
happen. And it's really cool. And it, it means also for customers or businesses, whoever you are, that you have a lot of options. And I think the great part about also with Cisco technologies, not like a lot of technologies, there are open APIs or available APIs for all of these technologies. So you can instantiate things that you didn't even know you could do before. I think that's really interesting. 100%, I agree. Anyway, and that's where the DevNet website, I mean, as a starting place where I began and I would encourage you know, other businesses and partners alike to do so, the developer, Cisco.com, the Start Now page is awesome to get training. And then like you said, I mean, how do we get hands off the sandboxes and get yeah. started with your journey there? I'm glad you brought that up. So for anybody um, you know, thinking about this and you want to do more, at developer.cisco.com, you can actually go slash Cisco Live to find more about this event. But at developer.cisco.com, you'll find all kinds of cool technologies from Learning Labs, our new Learning Center, Sandboxes, a lot of different things. And were, were those resources helpful for you when you kind of first started oh, doing this? thousand percent. I mean, that's okay. where I began. And that DevNet certifications, too, you can learn more about there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Start Now page was great to learn. If you're new to coding, I had a comp sci background, so the Python piece was known. But how does you know the industry view it, and how does network automation view it was new on my end. And so for network engineers, it might be the flip side. The Python piece may be new, or Ansible. These you know buzzwords we hear. The DevNet webpage gave a great uh, stomping ground to help. Okay, train you on it, get hands on with it. The sandboxes were great too. Yeah, so it's a great place to start. It's a really interesting bridge between the software technologies and the networking constructs that a lot of us network engineers have always played with. And that's, that's the hard part, because you know, software engineers think about these things in a very different way than network engineers do. But they do, at the end of the day, they're both trying to solve problems. Um, they just tend to use a slightly different language than each other, but I think there's more similarities there than everyone realizes, and I think these things can really help. So, sure, it was so great having you on. I really appreciate it. Everybody, please check out developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live, and we can't wait to see you here around the world of solutions. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.